Okay, okay, shh. I think I saw him over here. Yeah, I think that's him. Approach very slowly, and maybe we'll get him. No, hey, get back here. Come on, I'm just trying to save you. This plane is only 50 units wide. In this build tutorial, we're going to use state machines to make simple AI for a creature, in this case, a frog. The idea from this video comes from a question from the Discord channel where developer Dees2 asked how to make a frog that moves away from the player. And as soon as they asked that, I knew I wanted to make a video on it because little creatures running away from the player makes your world feel so alive. And I'm actually really excited to show you the tricks that came in handy to make this frog because I think you'll find them useful for all kinds of projects that you might work on. So. Let's uh, hop to it. I've linked the package below where the player controller and the frog are all set up. All of the assets I'm using here are free from the asset store. I've done a few tweaks to each of them, so you probably want to just use uh, what I'm giving you. All right, so let's check out the frog. Bolt is already installed, and on the frog, add a state machine. I called mine Creature AI Tutorial in case you just wanted to call yours Creature AI. In the state machine, make two states one called resting and one called evading or running away. And if you don't know, making new states is easy. You just right click and select create flow state and then you can name it in the graph inspector. By the way, if you want these windows to pop up sooner, you can go to edit and preferences and then go to bolt EX and then set the height of the graph sidebar threshold to be lower. All right, so right click on the states to make transitions from one state to the other. And let's name the transitions too. The first transition will handle the resting to evading. So let's call it, am I in danger? And then the next transition is for evading, running away to resting. So let's call that one, am I safe? That way, if you hold Alt and hover over the transitions, you'll see the names. Since we want to check whether the frog is in danger or not, it makes sense to make a Boolean called is in danger and make it an object variable. That way we can see what it is, true or false, in the inspector on the frog. All right, so let's go into the transition and there you can see I have a custom event called check danger. So just right click and type custom event and you want custom event right there. We're gonna trigger these in the states. So check danger uh, will get triggered and then we'll get a branch to check our Boolean we just made, the is in danger Boolean. If is in danger is true, the frog will go from resting to evading. You could use update here instead of the custom event, but update's a pretty big drain on performance. And with the custom event, we can actually control when we're doing this check instead of doing it all the time. Left click drag and control C copy your graph because we're gonna move to the evading to resting transition. Uh, the graph is gonna be the same with the exception that here we wanna check to see if it's false because is in danger false, that means the frog is safe. Let's go back to the top level. If you right click on your states, you can choose to have them happen on start or not. So right click on resting and make that happen on start. And then right click on evading and toggle start so that it's gray. The frog will be in the resting state when the game starts. That way we're not stressing them out too much. All right, so double click in resting and get your enter state. And let's start there. So the frog has an animator on it. I simplified the animator controller some, even though it still looks like some diagram from a medieval alchemy book. Uh, if you look at the parameters, all the parameters are triggers. And parameters live in the transition between the animator states, which is kind of like Bolt. All right, so on enter, we want the frog to just sit there. So I have an animator set trigger with idle for the name. And be careful that the idle is the uh, typed the exact same as it is in your animator parameters. Like I said, update is a big drain on performance. So let's, in effect, reduce the update calls. That way you can have a lot more frogs. Run update into a once unit, then start a timer. When the timer is complete, reset the once unit with the completed flow. That way it will fire once again. What we're doing is getting a flow that happens once every, and that depends on what you put in the duration. So maybe once every a half a second, you get a flow signal. 
So on the timer started flow, the frog will check for danger every 0.5 seconds. Now, the frog doesn't do much in idle, but he should at least watch for trouble, and the player is the trouble, so make a player object variable of type game object and drag in the player, which is the third person controller. We aren't going to use any tags or anything for this. And by the way, this is really important. Every time you use a timer or a wait unit, you need to go into the event. So just click on the event, and then in the graph inspector, uh, toggle that it is a coroutine. The concept of, hey, go do other things and then come back to me is intuitive for us humans, but not for computers. So we actually have to enable that functionality. Next, bring in that player variable and get a distance node. We're going to check for the distance between the frog and the player. So get transform, get position for the player game object and for the frog. From the distance node, get a less than or equal unit and put some amount where the frog is like, I'm out of here. I put five meters. Hold the alt key as you bring in the is in danger variable that will make it a set variable so that if the player is within five meters is in danger will be true. And then get a trigger custom event node. So just uh, right click add unit and type trigger custom event. Type check danger on the event exactly as you have it in the transition. Basically, we're setting the is in danger variable and then we're telling the transition to check it. Because of what we did with the once unit and the timer, this custom event is only going to fire every half second. As Bolt evolves into Unity visual scripting, these custom events are going to change, but the graphs I'm giving you will work and the concept should still be relevant. All right, so are you ready for some danger? Let's go into evading. So as soon as the frog senses he's in danger, this puppy's going to bounce. Get your on enter unit and then a quaternion look rotation with the transform forward uh, from the player. If the frog is facing the same way the character the player is facing, the frog is facing away from the character. So like if you are being chased, your chaser is facing the same direction as you. Set the frog's rotation to the player's forward rotation, and then set that animator set trigger to jump, and that's jump with a capital J. On update, let's do the once timer trick. And in the evading state, uh, this flow is actually going to trigger the frog jumping, so the duration is a little bit longer to allow for the jump to happen, so I actually have it 0.75 seconds. This next part's really fun, but it's best to skip over it for now and we'll come back to it. On enter, the frog turns away from the player right away, but as the player moves, we still want the frog to turn the same direction as the player is facing. That is, the frog is facing away from the player. Let's get the quaternion look rotation of the player again and connect it to a slurp. Slurp stands for spherical linear interpolation. And let's take a look at our frog here and imagine for a moment that he's in a bubble. And the bubble is all possible forward directions or all possible rotations. So imagine two forward directions that poke through the sphere and then drawing a line on the surface of the sphere from the one point to the other. So that's the spherical and the linear, and interpolation just means that from these two data points, where we're rotated and where we want to rotate to, the computer can estimate all the steps from A to B, as many steps as we want it to take. So in our case, every time this executes, the frog will rotate away from the player 10% from wherever it's currently facing. Then of course we need to take the quaternion output and use it to set the rotation of the frog. Next up, and this is really cool, so it'd be boring if the frog hopped in a straight line away from you. Like, come on, he's fighting for his life, he's got a family! So what we're going to do is toggle this uh, froggle. That is, we're making it so that the frog hops in a zigzag. To pull this off, what we need to do is get the frog's rotation, and then we get a couple of quaternion Euler units to put in the rotations that we want the frog to alternate between. And to add or subtract angles with quaternions, all we need to do is multiply them. And I gotta admit, I don't fully understand why multiplying quaternions means adding angles, but I'll put a video below if you're curious to uh, dive into that. Next, of course, we need to set the rotation to the frog. We do an animator set trigger for the jump parameter, and then do one for the idle parameter. 
And you might want to check out the animator because Jump to Idle has an exit time on it that makes it so that the jump animation completes before it goes to idle. Uh, so finally, we check for danger. And just like I have here in the lesser equal, I'd recommend that you put a higher number than you have in the resting state because that way it's like the frog is making sure that it's not in danger before it goes back into the resting state. And that kind of variation makes this little guy feel like a frog and not a computer program. Back to this other thing, the jump randomizer. Not only does the frog jump left and right, but one out of four jumps, the frog will completely reverse direction, which is no doubt an evolutionary thing to escape predators. And that little surprise is really, really fun. So every time this timer starts, we're going to generate a random integer. Be careful to get a random range integer and not random range float. So let me just show you real quick. Right click add unit, random range, and then not the first one, but the second one. You can see right there where it says integer. Since the max is exclusive, it won't be counted, and this is going to generate a random number 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the next unit, I have switch on integer, and here we can put in uh, different options, and the options can be any number. So I'll just add a few. Uh, and I just put them to be the numbers that the random range are going to generate. Three out of four times, the frog is going to turn away from the player. But one out of four times, the frog is going to completely reverse direction. The graph to turn the frog towards the player is similar to turning the frog uh, away from the player. So you could just copy and paste the graph or group up here and paste it below. The difference is that we're going to multiply the player's forward direction by negative one. And I'll show you how that works. Let's look at the frog on one axis. The forward direction is one, so backward would be negative one. Now let me show you how this works out in 3D. Let's rotate the frog 45 degrees. So when the frog moves forward, that forward direction is one, negative one. And then if we move the frog backwards, it would be negative one, one. Back to the graph here. Uh, unlike above, where we just move, rotated a little bit, uh, this time I wanna rotate the frog all the way. So make that T value be one, which is 100%. Then set that value to the frog's rotation. And actually the slurp isn't necessary here. We could just plug the look rotation into the set rotation, but this way the slurp is there if you wanted to modify the behavior. Once the frog is flipped, he'll start jumping in a zigzag that other direction. And with the evading state done, that's the graph. Thanks again for the question. I wouldn't have thought to make a video on this, and it was really fun. I'm sorry I can't get videos up more frequently. Work kind of gets in the way, but it means the world to me every time somebody subscribes. I toad, Ali, appreciate it. <laughs> All right. See you later, guys.